And next up is the Atlanta Falcons as they wrap up uh, our team needs for this show. Uh, Terry Fontenot in year three. Of course, the whole crew is back. Uh, they had nice progress, I think, all, all things considered, with that quarterback position a mess, uh, or at least they gave it a try with Mariota. It wasn't like he was a disaster. Um, who knows what, what they're going to do with him, but we all know Atlanta, again, is one of these teams that needs a quarterback. They've got a ton of cap space. Uh, there's a whole lot of talk, and and this is even something that I, I was able to talk about with Kevin Knight from the Falcoholic.com who covers the Falcons in the beginning of the season before it even began. He talked about this is a potential landing spot for Lamar Jackson. Oh yeah. And, and nobody was talking about Lamar Jackson to Atlanta at that point. So I think that that is definitely something to keep an eye on. He makes a ton of sense because they want to run the football at Atlanta. Yep. Uh, so really that would, that so, but if something doesn't happen there, you know, what do you do? I mean, Ritter is not really a, he's not a number one guy for a reason, but you're at number eight. So what do you do with that spot? Do you say, okay, I'm going to bring in another guy, a Levis and a Richardson, and I'll have him compete with Ritter and just go from there. If it's not a big move to get Jackson. This is a really tough call. Um, I started putting together when I was putting together the team needs and even look, thinking about the first mock draft that we're going to do at some point. I don't know if one of the quarterbacks will be there. There's uh, in terms of teams leapfrogging them in, in the trade market or just teams in front of them going quarterback. And I don't know if they're going to want to use another resource on quarterback. Um, I think it's going to be Ritter again with someone, uh, another veteran that's going to come in from the outside unless they make that big swing for the fence, like you said, with Lamar Jackson. So this could be I like think, a Derek Carr thing. Yeah. This or Derek Ryan Carr's Tannehill. Like, yeah, it could be. <laughs> I mean, it's the Arthur Smith connection is real. And Arthur Smith, love him or hate him, he knows how to win games with the running game. He knows how to do it. Not every offensive coordinator or head coach knows how to do that. I don't think you can look at this Falcons team and look past how bad their defense is and how bad it's been for years now. Um, they were they were six straight years. They were top 10 yards allowed um, defensively, 2014, 2019. Constant good, good defense, good defense, good defense. This is in the, the peak of the Matt Ryan era. But that side of the ball has fallen off of a cliff. They have Grady Jarrett, and beyond him, not much. And now they have so, a – what? So they have a, a, a position available as well, right? A, a coaching position on that side? Yeah, yeah, they they don't they have not wrapped that up yet. So, so we don't know if they're going to be three four four three. Yep, and Grady Jarrett, their top player inside, he fits into both. Um, I what like about the, what about the pass rushers from last year? Do you think they fit better as a four three? I think they fit better in a three four. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I um. So you I think, think that's where they'll stand? Then you think they'll find a defensive coordinator who's more of a three four guy? I do, and I, I think they need to find another pass rusher. I think they need to find another corner. Um, and I think they need another presence next to Jarrett. I mean, I think Grady Jarrett's one of the best defensive tackles in football, yes. but he just doesn't have any help next to him. And they need like a really good nose tackle, right? The guys that are interior disruptors, they need another body next to them. They just don't have it right now. And they need to escape this draft with multiple starting caliber defense players. Yeah, because if you look at it on offense, they don't care about about throwing the ball that much to receivers. So right. you've got your number one. You know, maybe they resign uh, uh, Zacchaeus. They'll give him a little bit of money, and then maybe you go out and you just get another guy, somebody right. that's just a reliable middle round veteran presence, yep. and that's it. Now you don't have to worry about receiver. You've got your star uh, t uh, tight end, and the offensive line actually has improved dramatically thanks to drafting and the breakout for Caleb McGarry last year, who was a free agent. Who was a free agent. Free agent. Uh, and he broke out, and now they got to pay him. But you think that's the question is do they feel, oh, you know, we waited for this until it was your final year and you're going to make money? And then, so, but I would think with the money they have, they bring back McGarry. They also have to re sign Lidstrom as soon as possible, which means this offseason you take care of that because he's the star of the line. And then the drafting of Hennessy and Dahlman, that really, you know, that that really did upgrade the interior of the of their offensive line. So I think their offensive line is actually set as long as they re-sign McGarry. 
Yeah, I, and I think it part of what makes these guys look very good is McGarry had a rough start to his career. He's gotten a little bit better every season, I would say, but they didn't have to pass protect that much, and that's True. why that's why this offensive line to me it's a little hard to truly evaluate because of what they had to do. Now they did a great job in the running game. They made a fifth round rookie. Um, Algier from BYU. Yes. He made the R lads all rookie team. And trust me, I mean, I liked Algier and I think yeah. he did a good job. That was offensive line and the scheme and the system. And my question is if they do want to throw the ball more in, in 2023, can these guys do it? That, that, that's the question. They're better off than most teams on the offensive line. So I don't think they need to address no, it unless, exactly. unless they yeah. lose McGarry to free agency. Uh, but like you said, I don't think it makes any sense to let him walk. Um, I would let Rashawn Evans leave at yes. inside linebacker or Lorenzo Carter. I let those guys leave before. Yes, I would break up that offensive line. And also, they probably should add another running back because they have so much need for that position. Like you said, we can't say look at Algier and say, okay, he's the guy. Right. You're gonna go, okay, he's a nice player. He could be a, a really good co number one, maybe. But you yeah. have to have another guy because Cordell Patterson does a nice job, but he's also getting a little older. Once he loses a little bit of that speed, it's all over. Right. And you have to bring in another quarter, another running back at some point. Yeah, yeah. these guys are okay, the, the backups, but that's system and and then not talent. They, they they need to to either off either free agency and may, and maybe because they got the money. Uh, I don't know who'd be available, but maybe one of these running backs become available that we just talked about that's not going to get signed, and maybe Atlanta spends some of the money there because it is the most important position, single position besides quarterback on their team because that's yeah. how they run their offense. And, and they will. I think they would pay someone if someone came available. If, if somehow the Giants let Saquon Barkley shake free. Oh, what a great move that would be. That's a team that I've, I've – from the beginning of the season, I said if the Giants move on, I think that's the team that Arthur Smith would just have that beeline towards Saquon. And and even though Algier had a good year and you have Cordero Patterson in the backfield, they, they would find usage for all three of those guys, no question. And it takes a lot of pressure off their quarterback position. They have the offensive line in place already. It makes a lot of sense um, economically as well as personnel-wise. I just think bringing Lamar Jackson in here, if it works, and I can't imagine if Lamar Jackson even had in any way, shape, or form a say in it. This would be the perfect place for him, and it also makes sense because you have Desmond Ritter as a backup. So right. you already have a young quarterback behind yeah. him in case that he gets hurt. And that can run, too, yeah. Yeah, and he's got a little bit of mobility. So just and just, just imagine what an offseason it could be for the Falcons fans if you're able to work out a deal for Lamar Jackson and then sign Saquon Barkley. Yeah. That would in that division too. That division's down as well. You know, Tampa Bay just won the division. weren't they they were under five hundred, right? I mean, it's that, that means that, all you would have to do with the rest of the money you have and in the draft, defense, 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 defense. defense. Don't even look at the offense. Pull a Matt rule from two thousand twenty. You just use all nine picks on defense. <laughs> yeah.